Hi, my name is Marcy, and I'm so glad you've joined us for day 18 of 23 Days with God. Today we'll be meditating on the mercy of God. Before we get started, let's take a moment first to prepare our hearts and minds by reading from Hebrews chapter 4. If you're like me, the mercy of God is a subject that you are both enthralled by and deeply uncomfortable with. To know that He is merciful is such good news because without His mercy, His compassion for helpless sinners, there would be no hope for us. At the same time, we know that objectively we don't deserve His mercy, and that makes it hard to look at. When I read texts like Hebrews 4, I almost want to avert my eyes in shame. Tozer speaks to this feeling in the knowledge of the holy when he says, For what right will we have to be in heaven? We who earned banishment shall enjoy communion. We who deserve the pains of hell shall know the bliss of heaven, and all through the tender mercy of our God. So how do we reconcile the mercy of God towards sinners with the wrath of God towards sin? To put it another way, and to be transparent with my own internal struggle, how can I believe and trust His mercy towards me? How can I approach God not with my eyes downcast, expecting His mercy and compassion towards me to be conditional on my behavior, but with my chin lifted in joyful expectation of His promise to offer mercy and grace in my time of need? I think the answer is in the passage from Hebrews 4. Let me read it again for you. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is one of my favorite descriptions of Jesus. It teaches us something very important, both about us and about Him. In other versions of Scripture, that word weakness is translated as infirmities. In his book, Healing for Damaged Emotions, author David Seamans tells us that this word infirmities is connected with the sacrifices offered by the priests in the Old Testament. It means a physical spot or a blemish. In the New Testament, the word came to be more of a figure of speech, implying the opposite of strength, a mental, moral, or emotional weakness. Both the Old and the New Testament meanings are incredibly important to us as we think about the mercy of God. The Old Testament priest had infirmities because he shared in the common lot of all human beings. So when he offered sacrifices on behalf of Israel, he was also sacrificing to cover his own imperfections. He could understand the infirmities of his people, their mental, moral, and emotional weaknesses, and deal more gently with them. Of course we know that Jesus, our great high priest, never sinned, and so never had to offer sacrifice on his own behalf. But this is the most beautiful thing about Hebrews 4.15 because he was tempted and tested at every point just like we are, we have a great high priest who understands the feeling of our infirmities. And so when Tozer writes that forever God's mercy stands, a boundless, overwhelming immensity of divine pity and compassion, we can know that he offers this overwhelming, compassionate mercy from a place of empathy. David Seamans says that Christ knows personally what it is to feel our weakness our emotional hang-ups, our inner conflict, frustration, anxiety, depression, isolation, rejection. He knows what it is to cry out with tears and to pray to God with loud sobs. He wrestled with feelings that nearly tore him to pieces. He knows, and he can feel it with you. Friends, this is why we can trust God's mercy. Tozer tells us that if we could remember that the divine mercy is not a temporary mood, but an attribute of God's eternal being, we would no longer fear that it will someday cease to be. And this is why we can, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That confidence is rooted in the truth that comes in the verse right before. We have a great high priest who is merciful and compassionate because he intimately knows how our weakness feels. We can draw near to God because He has drawn near to us. 
Today, I want you to take some time to reflect on how God's mercy might meet you in the places in your life where you feel you least deserve it. What is the thing that keeps you from approaching the throne of grace with confidence? What is it today that makes you feel like you cannot look God in the eye, that you have to keep your head low when you speak to Him? Think about whatever it is. And then, think of how Christ can relate to you in that weakness. While it's true that He never sinned, you can rest assured that He personally knows the emotions that your sin has left you wrestling with. Do you feel shame, anger, sorrow, and regret over your sin? Christ knows these feelings. Friend, He has felt them. Ask yourself, how does knowing that Jesus knows how you feel change the way you think about His willingness to forgive you for whatever it is that keeps you from drawing near to Him? Does it change what you believe about His eagerness to freely offer you mercy and compassion? I want to leave you with this verse by Charles Wesley. Arise, my soul, arise. Shake off thy guilty fears. The bleeding sacrifice on my behalf appears. Before the throne my surety stands. My name is written on his hands.